Hey everyone, welcome back to our course on building a basic FTC robot for new FTC teams. My name is Shamit and I'm the team captain. My name is Ahilish, I'm a mechanical lead for Team Legitbot. And in this video, we're going to discuss motors, servos, and different ways to have motion transmission on your FTC robot. So motion transmission in FTC is created using servos and motors. So first we're going to talk a little bit about motors. So we have a few different types of motors here. We have a rev motor, we have another rev motor, and we have an Animark motor, which is Animark, if you don't know, it's another company that makes FTC gear, and we have a dual build a motor. So motors are essentially powerful pieces of equipment that turn 360 degrees, and they connect to your expansion or control hubs using these two pin connectors that are on each one. And you can use uh, other equipment like encoders to measure the rotations of motors and make them turn to a certain position or turn for a certain number of rotations to kind of increase your accuracy in um, doing missions. So usually they use planetary gear boxes and there are many different types of gear ratios and many different types of build systems they can be incorporated into. For example, these motors are both 40 to 1 gear ratios. So here we have a few different types of servos. So this is a rev servo and this is a go build a servo. And servos essentially contain a motor and feedback system. And there are a few different types of servos. So there are positional rotation servos which turn up to 180 degrees and can only turn to a certain point in that 180 degree range. And they control the range of the servos using servo programmers. So this is one of them. For rev, and this is how you kind of control that um, servo. And then there are continuous rotation servos, which can be continuously turned in either direction, so counterclockwise or clockwise. So some servos can be set to either rotate continuously or positionally, and they connect to um, expansion and control hubs using the pin connectors again. And there are many different types of servos that can be used in FTC. It just really depends on what you want to do, what your, uh, what you need it for, and also just like maybe based off like which type, which type you're getting from like which company. They may differ. Now I'm going to be talking about the different ways you can transmit motion on your FTC robot. So let's take a hypothetical um, example. So let's say you have your rev motor with this shaft that's spinning, either clockwise or counterclockwise, and you want to power this wheel. However, for let's say you can't fit this motor right next to this wheel, or let's say you want to change the gear ratio, which we'll talk about later, or let's say, for example, you simply don't want to protect the motor because directly powering um, wheels is actually bad for the motor. In all of these scenarios, you would want to use motion transmission, let's say gears, pulleys, or any other way that you can transmit motion. So the first form of motion transmission that I'll be talking about is gears. Gears is usually considered the simplest form of motion transmission. So here we have our motor, which is rotating this axle. And here we have another wheel, which is on this axle. As you can see, there are two gears interlocking. These two gears have teeth, multiple teeth around the circumference, which interlock with each other. However, these gears actually rotate in opposite directions. So if the motor is turning clockwise, this wheel will actually turn counterclockwise. However, some things to look out for when using gears is that you can't um, move them far apart. You can only have gears right next to each other because gears have to be touching. Another thing to look out for is after a lot of use, gears can actually wear down and these teeth will actually become sh um, less sharp, which will make the gears slip. The next form of motion transmission I'm going to be talking about is chains and sprockets. Chains and sprockets are another form of motion transmission that, that are similar to gears, but in this case the axles can rotate in the same direction. Let's say this axle is being driven by a motor and this axle has a wheel or whatever you want to power. Here we have two, one sprocket on each of the axles and there's a chain connecting them. Here you can see that the chain, actu the chain actually has different links and these links actually interlock with the teeth on the sprocket. This is similar to the gears in that they have teeth, however, um, unlike the gears, these can be um, transferring motion over long distances, and both of these axles rotate in the same direction. However, these um, chains and sprockets are a little more complicated because it requires three, piece, three pieces for every system. Also, another thing to look out for is that these chains actually need to be cut to a specific length in order to actually have the system because these chains ha require different special tools to cut them, they, that makes them a little more complicated. 
these chains and sprockets can um, run up in really high speeds, however they may be unreliable when faced with much higher torque. They're a little hard to build, and um, however, these are pretty common in FTC and can um, be used in a wide variety of applications since they can transfer motion over long distances. Here we have our third and final example of motion transmission on an FTC robot. This is one of the more common ways of transferring motion on an FTC robot. Here we have our pulley, two pulleys on two shafts, and these are the two shafts that are going to be connected. Pulleys and belts are similar to chains and sprockets in that they both make the axle turn in the same direction and require um, two basically round things on an axle as well as something to um, interlink the two um, shafts. So here we have a belt. This is a really long belt and it has teeth on the inside. These teeth actually interlock with these pulley teeth. And here we have um, these two shafts interlocked. So when I rotate on this axle, the other axle rotates. Here you can see that both the um, shafts rotate in the same direction. However, these pulleys can, um, these pulleys can uh, transfer motion over long distances. And they are pretty simple to, uh, these pulley systems are pretty simple to create because they don't require any additional parts. And these pulleys are fixed length. So they can, um, they can, they can just put, be put on these um, pulleys just like this. However, they do have some cons. For example, these belts have to be perfectly tensioned. If they are too loose, then the belt comes off the pulley and these two um, shafts are not, no longer interlinked. Another thing to look out for is that these pulleys may not be able, able to handle high, um, high speeds because once again, they may fall off. A third thing to look out for is that the, if these pulleys are not aligned, if they're slightly tilted, then the belts easily come off. These belts, as, as previously mentioned, are similar to chains and sprockets. However, they are slightly different in that they can be tensioned. So if you have a third axle um, right here, you can tension these pulleys and take out the factor of these pulleys being too loose. So now I'm going to be talking a little bit about gear ratios. Gear ratios, although I have gear ratios right here, gear ratios actually apply to all the um, stated forms of motion transmission, including sprockets and chains, as well as pulleys and belts. Gear ratios are basically the ch changing how many teeth these gears have to make the output shaft behave differently. So, um, here we have one example of changing the gear ratio. We have a larger gear to a smaller gear. Here, this larger gear has 60 teeth, while this smaller gear has 30 teeth. This means that for every rot one rotation this gear turns, this gear will turn two rotations. This, of course, will make the output shaft much faster than the input, which is the motor shaft. <laughs> However, this will actually decrease the torque. The torque is basically the pushing force, and it determines how much force like, uh, the shaft can apply. For example, this would be really good for something that has to go fast, like a shooter. However, it may not be that great for something that has to lift up or provide a lot of force. For example, this may not be good for lifting up on an object, for example, a heavy object. If you were lift to lift up on a heavy object, you may want to use a different, um, a smaller to larger gear ratio. Here we have another type of changing the gear ratio. Here, the input shaft, which is the motor shaft, has a small gear, which is a ter has 30 teeth on the outside, and this, the output shaft, has actually 60 teeth. It's a lo much larger gear. Be because of this, when this ro um, motor turns two rotations, this will turn one. Or, if this motor turns one rotation, this motor shaft turns one rotation, the output shaft will actually turn half rotation. This, of course, will make the output shaft slower. This may not be good for something that has to go fast, like a shooter, but it will be good for something that has to have a lot of power, like, for example, lifting up a heavy object. Or maybe pushing, maybe if you want to apply this to the drivetrain, this would make the robot actually have a stronger pushing force, and maybe push other robots around and play good defense, but it may be bad for something like moving around really fast. All of the build systems that we use in this video, such as Rev, GoBuilder, and Anymark, will be linked right in the description. Be sure to check out next week's videos. As we have previously stated, this is a seven-week series, so we hope you continue watching our series. 
we really hope that you um, enjoyed our video and learned a lot from this video. And we also hope that you'll continue watching our series and learn more in your FTC journey. Thank you for watching.